Kendra Haste was born in 1971 and grew up in London. She attended Caberwell College of Art and received a bachelor's degree in illustration. She then went on to the Royal College of Art, where she received a master's degree in natural history illustration. She is a contemporary sculptor who uses animals as her subject. She explains, Animals have held an obsessive fascination for me throughout my life. Their diverse form, nature, and behavior provide a rich and inexhaustible depth of subject. Animals have been for many years and continue to be the sole focus of my work as a sculptor. In her artist statement, Kendra credits her drive to focus on animals to her childhood in London. I was brought up in London, a childhood with few animals and little experience of wild places or even the countryside. Mine was very much an urban experience, separate from the natural world. My attraction to wild animals was born of the desire to connect with and discover something in their nature, which has long been ago been lost within ourselves. These preoccupations became obsessive and led me to study in particular the larger mammals and of course primates with whom we share so much flesh, blood, and muscle, as well as traits of behavior. But it is to other quite unique aspects, the sense of another being, an individual spirit, inherit in each animal that is the true subject for my work. She also explains her process of researching she uses before she creates a sculpture. She emphasizes the importance of intimately studying her subjects, whether this means going to zoos or going on an expedition into the wilderness. She has traveled to many places, such as Africa and India, to observe animals in their natural habitats. She spends an enormous amount of time studying anatomy, movement, and behavior. However, despite the intense technical research she puts into each animal, she points out the importance of focusing more on the spiritual qualities of the animal. She writes, Such analysis does not overwhelm my work, for it is the spirit and energy of the subject that I fundamentally seek to convey. My sculptures are depictions of individual animals that I have encountered, those that I have spent time observing or I have left a deep impression on me. These are unique portraits rather than stereotypical generalized interpretations of the species. Because of this focus on the individual animal as opposed to a broad generalization of a species, Kendra's sculptures become much more intimate and impactful. Even when she creates multiple sculptures of the same species, each one remains unique and has its own spirit. Kendra creates all of her sculptures using wire mesh, making her pieces unique from other wildlife sculptors. She comments on her preference for this unique medium in her artist statement. The apparent ordinariness of wire and wire mesh belie their expressive potential and provide ideal material for my sculptures. Drawing is integral to my work as an artist and is perfectly matched by the linear qualities of the wire. No other material I have ever used has been able to suggest the sense of movement, of life, of contour and volume, contrast of weight and lightness, of solidity and transparency, values that I find in my natural subjects. It is the perfect medium inviting continuing exploration and challenge. She explains in an interview with Taylor Holmes that she first started creating with wire mesh when she was in college. She said that sculptors often use wire mesh as an armature, later covering it with more traditional sculpting mediums. She, however, was drawn to the wire as a final medium, saying that she found it more aesthetically interesting. In the interview, she also explains that she creates a steel armature for many of her larger pieces, which gives them stability. However, she points out that many of her smaller sculptures are only made with wire. When creating a sculpture, Kendra builds up the structure using layers of wire mesh. By working in layers, she is able to slowly build up the shape and can be extremely accurate. The wire mesh layers are attached using wire, and the shapes are made by forming the mesh after it has been attached using a hammer. She works life-size, making some of her sculptures extremely large, such as with the elephant, giraffe, and rhinoceros. Because of her sculptures are large and very time-consuming, Kendra spends a lot of time planning each piece before she begins. Drawing helps her figure out her sculptures, and she also sells her drawings as finished pieces of art. She also creates technical drawings to help her figure out how to construct some of her sculptures. And she also thoroughly plans the placement of her sculptures within their environment before she begins. She does this by creating drawings and small-scale models of the sculptures and the location they will be installed in.
Sandra is an award-winning artist and has been featured in many galleries and exhibitions. She received the Artists for Nature Foundation Award in 1997, the Della Rowney Illustration Award in 1998, the BBC Wildlife Art Award for Sculpture in 1999, and her project for the Tower of London was nominated for the 2012 Marsh Award. She has been featured in over 20 group and solo shows. Her most recent show is on display currently, running from January 27th to August 31st, 2016, in the Let's Dance Animals Arts and Design Show at the Chai Mai Museum in Taiwan. Here she has displayed a red stag, a warthog, mandrill, and two baboons. Each of these pieces are on loan from private collectors for the show. Most of the pieces she makes are commissions, both from private individuals and public entities. She receives most of her commissions from private collectors. These private works fascinate me the most because of the way the sculptures interact with their environments, most often in the domestic space of a house or backyard. Her public work consists of the London Underground's life-size elephant installed at Waterloo Station and her commission by the historic royal palaces and installed at the Tower of London that contains 13 life-size sculptures. These sculptures pay tribute to the Royal Menagerie, which were animals that were kept at the Tower of London in the 1100s. This commission includes three lions, an elephant, a polar bear, and a troop of baboons. The following video discusses Kendra's Tower of London commission. The Tower of London project is such an exciting project for me because it's depicting both wild animals and wild animals in captivity. So these, these won't be wimpy zoo animals, these are very much wild in tooth and claw, very sort of brutalised animals. So it's really sort of capturing the sense of energy of a sort of wild beast within the confines of somewhere like the Tower. It's such an extraordinary story and also really a little known story and something that's very intriguing and we thought would surprise people about the Tower of London and yet it's such an important part of its history. It was here for 600 years. For the project um, we're making three lions. There's also an, an elephant which was a particular favourite of Henry III. I'm also making a polar bear which I've not made before and uh, there's sort of record keeping of him actually fishing for his food in the River Thames which is just an extraordinary image to think of this huge animal from the Arctic fishing in the Thames. Yes, he's going to be um, quite a challenge to produce and I want him to be sort of a very sort of wet polar bear to really sort of get across the sort of musculature and the, the sort of power of this enormous beast. This, this whole idea of exotic beasts being something, well, as they are, absolutely incredible, something that people hadn't seen, something that lots of people would have thought also didn't actually exist. How do you know, if you live in England, that a unicorn isn't real and an elephant is? Um, people did believe very strange things, or what we would consider very strange things about the animals, one of which was that elephants would drink wine. Um, this is particularly in the 17th century. There's an Indian elephant which is given to the king, and it's given I think two gallons of wine a day um, and it's partly to do with the regality and the royalness of the elephant that it was seen that it should drink this kind of thing but it was also just felt that that was how elephants operated though I'm not sure how people thought that an elephant would get a barrel of wine in the wild but there you go. It's, it's an amazingly sort of pliable material it looks harsh and sort of unbending but it's, it's, it's actually quite soft to use so you can get really incredible detail with it. We're just absolutely delighted to have commissioned Kendra to make these sculptures and we were just struck by how incredibly lifelike her sculptures are. She somehow manages to really capture the spirit and the movement of the creatures. Such a huge privilege and a huge responsibility as well to, to be asked to depict these animals. I really want to sort of do them justice, for want of a better expression, but just to really recreate their presence and their power, and to a certain extent their pain as well really, of how they would have been at the tower. 